As the spread of Omicron outpaces testing capacity, health officials are looking at other ways to track the virus, and that includes studying what we flush down our toilets. Some experts say wastewater can help measure levels of coronavirus in the population. So how big of a role can wastewater play in fighting the fast-moving Omicron variant? Bernadette Conant is the CEO of the Canadian Water Network. It formed a coalition in 2020 to share knowledge about the technique, and she is in Waterloo, Ontario. Bernadette Conant, welcome to the show. Thank you. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You, you know, we like to call this show P&P, &P, uh, but this is a very different kind of P&P &P that we're going to talk about right now. So, so, uh, so I, <laughs> I couldn't resist. I, but, I wondered who was going to get to the first <laughs> joke. So there you broke the ice there, David. So we're good. All right. Well, let's start with the basics. I, I mean, how do you yep. go about analyzing sewage wastewater for COVID? Right. So sewage wastewater, water from you know, your wastewater treatment plant, it essentially serves as a pooled community stool sample, if you want to think of it that way. And so what they're looking for, they're not actually looking for live virus that's, that's a challenge to your system. They're looking for, it's like a detective story. They're looking for genetic fragments within that um, wastewater that kind of tells the story of what uh, happening in the health of the community that's contributing through the toilet to that uh, combined stool sample. Okay, um, so it, it's dirty work, I guess, what somebody's got to do it, right? But it, it, it's not new methodology, but how does monitoring sewage help us, you know, shed light on, on the spread of Omicron, for example, right now? Uh, sure, so it's not a new approach but the actual methodology to use it applied to COVID is new. And that, mm. that's important to know. That's the, 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 the piece that's really kind of driving the, the pieces of, of the uncertainty is about applying it to COVID, which we've got now two years of experience. And, and as you've got familiarity, um, a lot of work being done in the city of Ottawa for that. Um, so what, it, what you're looking for is that, the RNA, that genetic fragment. And what that can tell you is give you kind of a feeling in that combined sample of what's happening in the community. And why that's become such a big uh, topic of discussion recently is not so much about the change in the methods, although they've certainly matured and evolved over the last two years. It's really the change in the circumstance because of Omicron and the fact that testing is swamped. And now what was always sort of a tool to contribute to the various tools that public health has to look at community spread of COVID, it's now become maybe one of the better tools to talk about what's going on in the community. So for instance, you really want to see the flattening of the curve, but if an apparent flattening or reduction of cases is becoming is uh, apparent or seeming to happen because um, testing is swamped, but cases are still increasing, the wastewater is going to show you that. So that's a really important um, element of, of its importance to that toolbox and what it can do. And it's really sort of showing its potential uh, because of what Omicron's ch you know, changed the game. Right. So this is, this is the challenge, right? Like here in Ottawa, you know, we would get the daily case count reports based on PCR testing and you got a sense of what COVID was like in your community. And I mean, obviously this is no substitute right. for PCR testing or testing on an individual basis, but without those case counts to rely on, everybody, I guess, needs something to let them know where things are. And the wastewater signal could very well be that metric. Is, is that fair to say? Yeah, absolutely. And because you've used the Ottawa example, we can talk about a couple other areas in Canada if you want. But one of the really important things to understand about that is that you've had um, Dr. Rob Dallatola and the larger Ottawa team who've been working on this hand in glove with the public health unit have been working on this um, for almost two years. So the ability to generate confidence in what that wastewater can and can't do and sort of tweak the method, that's really been developed over the last two years. So that now there's a, when Dr. Vera Etches in your area makes a statement, she can say with confidence that this is going to become an important indicator because there's that really demonstrated relationship and that demonstrated knowledge. It's, it's very much um, a place-based um, approval, right, of sort of a place-based demonstration of, of knowing that it works for because right. everybody's setting is different. And that, that's part of what makes wastewater more complicated than individual clinical testing. 
because it very much depends on the whole nature of your wastewater system. So you've got a really great um, background and experience in Ottawa to be able to say, yes, now we feel we can rely on, on it uh, to help us answer the questions that you uh, outlined. Right. So it's been embraced here as sort of a supplemental tracking in a way, because, you know, until now there was a reliance on the test. But, you know, it, right. it, it's being used in almost every province. But in, in Nova Scotia, the, the chief medical officer there said there's there's a lot of questions from a public health perspective and they don't necessarily feel it's yet at a point where they can accurately use it as a surveillance tool. What, what do you make of that? I understand that statement. And maybe if I can take a step back, uh, the Canadian Water Network set up in April 2020 the um, COVID wastewater, COVID-19 wastewater coalition. And really the point of this coalition was to frame the conversation that I could see was coming since March 2020 went through the Global Water Research Coalition. We saw that that early indications in the Netherlands that was this was going to become a potential um, method to help the public health piece. And we really set it up to answer three questions, or I shouldn't say answer, to frame the conversation so, it, so they could answer three questions. One, does it work? Like, does this concept, proof of concept, does it even see it in a way that, that makes sense? Two, can we rely on the data that are generated from it? And three, are those data useful in a practical sense for public health? So number one is a definite yes. It's definitely uh, been shown around the world that it can work and that it can s see that. So that's sort mm -hmm. of a reasonably, un with, with the qualification of if you do the tests carefully, right? There are still people that may, if you don't do something carefully enough, then we have to be careful. If you do it well and with the appropriate quality assurance, quality control like you're getting there, the answer to that is an unequivocal yes, that it works. The second one is more of a mixed one. Can I rely on it? Dominantly, that's yes. And I would give you a great deal of confidence in, in the, the systems that you're looking at. But it's a, a young, what was a new science, and now I would call it a young science, it's not yet matured to the point where there's a standardized test right. or it's, it's like it's not like a regulated business. So the problem for public health um, is if you're taking this as, I need to use it to make a big decision on or to replace something, then you're, you, as responsible for public health, have to put your reliance in the data. And it's difficult at the moment with all the evolving science and the lack of standardization to be able to have huge confidence in that data. The difference when you're taking an approach that I think was taken in Ottawa and uh, lots of other places in Ontario and in Alberta and other places was approaching it that over time looking at it as a potential toolbox you a grown uh, have grown the confidence in its use right. and the ability to use it so uh, you know, I hope that explains why it's a little bit of understanding on both sides so I think Dr. Strang is probably speaking to for what we wanted to use it and what we need we're not yet comfortable that it provides the level of confidence that we need but what you have where you have areas like uh, region of Waterloo and York and Peel that are working with the University of Waterloo, you know, Thunder Bay or Windsor, groups working with the University of Windsor um, in Alberta, right. in Saskatchewan, places where they've got that developed confidence and there's a, a, a comfort level that the techniques are being applied well, um, there's a greater uptake. But that approach really is a difference between is it good enough versus how can I use it best? So right. I guess that's what I would say that the coalition is really looking to have the question asked, how can this best help uh, help me help Canadians? Right. Well, hopefully uh, it, it is accurate here in Otto because it's showing maybe cases are leveling off a little bit. So I'll take that bit of hope where I can. So, uh, Bernadette Conan, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, great to speak to you about it, David. Thanks. Hi, I'm Vashi Capello's host of Power in Politics. See more of our show by subscribing to the CBC News Channel or click the link for another video.